Factorio is a tower defense game. Well, kind of. Mm. Not at all, really. But mm. for the purposes of this tutorial, let us assume that it is. We need to protect our factory from the evil residents of the planet we have invaded slash crash landed on, and we do so with a perimeter wall. Hello, I am Bigfoot, and today I'm going to go through my particular version of perimeter wall design. And the important part of that statement is the my particular version part. I'm not telling you how to do it, or that you are doing it wrong. I am not even saying that my way is superior. I am confident that there are better ways to do it than what I do. But the way I do it has some interesting and useful consequences that you might find interesting and useful. So where do we begin? We begin with the basics. Biters love the corners of our perimeter walls. If we present them with a corner, they will normally prefer to attack this part over others, and the reason is because the turret on that corner is vulnerable. It is the least well protected turret, and so by going for that one, they can eventually take it out. They can then concentrate on the next most vulnerable, take that out, then the next most vulnerable, and so on. Corners are fundamentally a weakness in any perimeter wall. What we need are curves. The longer and more gradual the curves, the better. This is part one of my philosophy. Part two is something you may already be doing, but for the purposes of a completeness, I will cover it anyway. In order to feed those turrets with ammunition, I build a complete loop around the perimeter wall with the ammo the wall needs. In that loop are two conveyor belts, one for red ammunition, or uranium if you are ambitious, and another for artillery rounds, and then two pipes, one for heavy oil and one for light oil. I don't like to rely on one fuel for my flamethrowers, so I bring both heavy and light oil around the perimeter wall and alternate their use between each flamethrower turret. These loops of ammunition act as a store for each of the respective turrets and means that all ammunition should be available to all turrets. Part three, blueprints. We want to build the perimeter wall with blueprints. It is no fun laying down turret after turret, inserters, power, that is a nightmare. But using a blueprint can be tricky if we want the whole thing to connect together. If we have a continuous ring of perimeter wall around our base, unbroken by any bodies of water, then we need that blueprint to line up the last piece of perimeter wall with the first piece if we want complete perfection. It all needs to connect together. Well, I suppose it maybe doesn't need to, but wouldn't it be really cool if we could come up with a system that did? This is the part of the video where I explain how this can be achieved if you want to take on the challenge yourself. It isn't an easy challenge, make no mistake, but it is definitely possible. If it isn't obvious already, I've already done it and it works amazing. I wouldn't be making this video if that wasn't the case. But if you aren't interested in how I did this or in doing it yourself, then this part of the video is going to be pointless. Skip to the time on the screen and you can get to the bit where I explain how these walls are to be used, it should be obvious, and then I put them into action. Or I suppose, you know, just grab the blueprints from the link in the description and get cracking. You do you. Okay, so now we've lost all the wasters, let's get into the nitty gritty. What we need to be able to achieve this goal is a grid. If we place items on a grid and those items line up either along their sides for vertical and horizontal portions, or at their corners for the diagonal bits, then the last part of the grid will always line up with the first part. It's a grid. That's how the corners of a grid behave. The item we are going to use to create that grid is the RoboPort. Not only does this item define the grid, but it is also an item that is required. We want robots to fix our perimeter wall, so any set of perimeter wall blueprints needs to have a RoboPort included in it. So we need one anyway. Why not base our whole design around it? A row port operates on a set grid of 50 by 50. So that is what our blueprint is going to be based on. If it isn't clear what I'm getting at, then it is as follows. I'm going to build a continuous loop of row ports around my factory that line up either along their complete edges or at their most diagonal point. As long as I keep to this philosophy, no matter what shape I draw, the last row port will always line up with the first. If we base our perimeter wall segments on this 50 by 50 grid, then it too will always arrive back at the beginning, and thus we have our perfect wall segment geometry. I would imagine, well, for the straight portion at least, this is probably something you have probably done at some point already. 
it makes a lot of sense for a perimeter wall section to be based on the rubber port grid in this way. Things do get a bit tricky at the corners though, so how do we do that? The important part to consider is the boundary line between two segments. For the straight portions, this boundary line is pretty obvious. Factorio is a 2D game, so up and down and left and right are clearly defined. For the diagonal sections, this is the boundary line between two segments. Precisely where the corners of the rubber port network meet, i.e. the corners of the 50x50 50 50 grid, the perimeter wall blueprint must stop and be tileable along this line. The crucial thing to note is that there are two positions along this line where it is possible to put a turret and one position where it isn't. We can place a turret directly on this line so that it effectively tiles itself with the next segment. It is essentially reflecting itself along the boundary line. And we can place a turret two tiles away from that in any direction. This is still tileable. But if we place a turret one tile from that in any direction, then it will clash with itself when the next segment is placed down. Don't put turrets in these positions, it won't work. If we go back to our rubber port loop from before, these are all the boundary lines. These are the boundary lines our perimeter wall segments need to tile to. Rubber port goes in the middle of the segment. If we place rubber ports left and right of the blueprint and have it spanning over the boundary line so that it tiles with itself, then this limits our options at the corners. We would need additional segments. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. This whole subject is difficult enough to explain. Rubber ports go in the middle. That's the principle. Looking at this loop of rubber ports, the corners look too sharp for my liking. I want more curve. This can be achieved by moving the corner rubber port back a few tiles. It still connects to the rubber ports either side and it gives me a more gentle curve. And more importantly, the rest of the grid is still preserved. The principle here is that the corner segment will be built with the rubber port in the perfect position on the 50 by 50 grid and then the moment before I take a blueprint of it, I move it back a few tiles. The sequence is important. The segment needs to be defined by the perfect position, but the rubber port can be moved once the segment is completed. If we do this to the entire loop, then it looks like this. There is one more principle to consider, and this one took me a long time to figure out. If we want a railway exit to our perimeter wall at any point in that wall, which we will, then the grid of the rubber ports needs to be coordinated with the grid of the railway, which operates on its own 2x2 two two independent grid, or when we get to that railway exit, it could be a single tile away from where it needs to be. We need the first segment we put down, whichever segment that might be, to be railway compatible. If we place a rubber port down on the map and build railway lines up against it, then we can see the interaction of these two grids. These two orientations will never work no matter how much you try, and that is because when we get to the corners, these need to rotate. And if you do that with this orientation, they won't interact. They won't coincide. That leaves us with these two orientations, both of which have rotational symmetry, and so are therefore possible, but only one of which works for me. If we take a look at my railway segment, then you can see that I have two railway lines running along the center line, one for each direction. Because this runs along the center of the segment, and so does the rubber port, and each are four tiles wide, the only orientation that works is this one on the right. If this railway entrance had only a single railway entering or exiting the base, so that trains had to run in both directions on the same line, then I would need to use the rubber port orientation on the left. This is a really critical point. You need to decide what your railway exit is going to look like. Are you going to have one railway or two railways running along the center line? And then you need to base your entire geometry on that. Anytime you start a segment, put the rubber port down first and check which railway grid it is on before building anything. If you meticulously build a whole load of stuff that you are sure is perfect, but that doesn't tile correctly, first, before doing anything else, check the rubber port railway orientation. Does a single railway line up with the center of the rubber port, or is it two? I spent hours figuring out this one single point. Do not underestimate the impact of getting this wrong. These are the principles. If all of this makes perfect sense, 
or at least you understand the principles and think you know how to abide by them, then you are probably ready to go. From here we just get into my particular way of doing things. So what do I want in a perimeter wall? Lots of gun and laser turrets? Sure thing. Artillery turrets? Yep. Radar, power, maybe a path for me to run around? Definitely. Some, some lighting would be cool. I'll need my loops of ammunition. And in each segment, I want to use two flamethrowers, each using a different fuel. For the segments themselves, I want the standard straight segments, so a vertical slash horizontal one, and then another diagonal one. I want a parking garage segment and a railway exit entrance segment. I'm not going to build these ones on these variants on the diagonal. I've tried that before. They are really bad. Not having a 45 degree gate is pretty limiting in this regard. So just a standard straight one will do. That is four segments. Then for the curves, I want right-handed and left-handed inward curves and right-handed and left-handed outward curves. So eight segments in total. From here, it is just a case of building it. My goal is to get about twice the number of gun turrets, the laser turrets in each segment, which I tend to build in two or three evenly spread clumps. Flamethrowers go in the quarter and three quarter positions. And then I just try and cram the rest of the space with as many turrets as I can. If I can't get a gun turret position to work with an inserter, then I just swap it out with a laser one. The straight segments are obviously easier and will probably come naturally. The curves are a lot more difficult, but the principle is the same. On the 45 degree sections, I tend to use two flamethrowers connected to each other just to make sure I get a good spread. This is still only using one type of fuel. It's just feeding two turrets instead of one. For me, the curves and the diagonals are just something I keep going with until I'm happy. I would have a first stab at the turret positions, pause, take a step back, review, go again and repeat. I'm looking for gaps. How do I fill gaps most effectively to get the greatest density of turrets that is possible? Then I try and feed those turrets. If I can't feed them, then I'll put a laser turret down. If I can't power it, oh, you know, it's just you go around in circles. What you are looking to achieve, you know, it's, it might be completely different. This part of the video is entirely subjective. So these are my main perimeter wall segments. All eight of them. And just to check they all line up and do as expected, here is a series of perimeter walls I made. You know, not too subtle, I hope. I also need a different wall for my outposts. And for this, I'm going to talk a little bit about trains. As a principle, I don't put railway signals or junctions on my railway networks out in no man's land. And by that I mean, you know, outside the main base, but not in an outpost. Anytime a signal or a junction is put on a railway line out in no man's land, a train is liable to stop or be jammed up by it, which makes it vulnerable to biters. So my plan is to use my outposts as railway intersections for further outward expansion. I want to be able to have a single line of railways enter an outpost, with two or more railways leaving it to go to other outposts, using the outpost itself as a turning or crossing point. So for my outpost perimeter wall, I want a continuous ring of railways running around the perimeter included in the segment blueprints. I can then have a railway entrance or exit more or less anywhere I choose. Well, as long as I've chosen to put a straight segment where I want that railway exit. And just like that, I have another eight segments for my outpost perimeter walls. Lovely jubbly. And it is about time we welcome back the wasters who didn't want to get into the weeds. So here we have our two sets of wall segments. The eight at the top are for my perimeter wall and the eight at the bottom are for my outposts. The difference being that for my outposts, the flamethrowers have been removed and I have added a continuous line of railways so that the outpost can act as a railway interchange. What I'm going to do now is take you through how to use them. Most of the main perimeter wall segments don't have a railway included, so to make sure the first segment you put down is railway compliant, I have added hash marks in the corners of the blueprints. This also helps to line up adjacent segments to each other. The hash mark acts as a key to make sure the segments align perfectly with the next one. It makes things pretty foolproof, to be honest. These can be removed once the wall has been put down. 
For the most part, as long as you line up these hash marks, the last part of the wall will always line up with the first part. Well, I mean, as long as you don't abuse it. There are, of course, situations where the geometry won't line up perfectly, simply because the radius of the curve of the segments I have built is too large. Everything will still be on grid, it is just that the segments I have made won't work. Segments with a tighter curve would be required. Segments I don't think I will use. So the main perimeter wall segments are just a simple case of lining up the hash marks and not abusing it. The outpost segments already have railways included, so I didn't think it warranted the hash marks. It will already snap to the railway grid. As long as the railways line up with each other and the segments connect, you should be fine. Unless you abuse it. Yada yada yada. You get the idea. These wall segments will make a perimeter wall more or less any shape you like and will still join up at the beginning to make a complete ring. Pretty cool, even if I do say so myself. The last thing to mention is that there will be occasions where a complete ring won't be possible and you will encounter a body of water in the way. This creates a situation that is essentially the same as a corner, i.e. it's a vulnerability in your perimeter wall. The biters can attack this corner in much the same way that I mentioned earlier, taking out the very last turret, then the one next to it, then the next one, and so on. So I have these last four blueprints to be used wherever that perimeter wall meets a body of water. They essentially carry on the perimeter wall for just a little bit longer so as to cover the last turret and prevent the biters from gaining an easy opening. All of these blueprints are available via the link in the description. Of course they are. And that is that. The perfect perimeter wall geometry. Fun times. I hope it has been interesting or useful or whatever. Till next time.